This video will demonstrate how to run R code that compares land use maps of reference time 1, reference time 2, and simulated time 2. This method shows how much of the agreement between reference time 2 and simulated time 2 maps is attributable to land persistence versus land change, and also how much of the disagreement is due to error in quantity or error in spatial allocation. Instead of individually performing the 3-map comparison by cross-tabulation at multiple resolutions, this R code shows how much agreement varies according to the different resolutions in one graph. This code uses data used in the 2011 paper, Comparisons of 3 Maps at Multiple Resolutions, a case study of land change simulation in Chan Don District, Vietnam, by Pontius et al. Check the reference at the end of the video to access this paper. This particular study takes place between 1990 and 2001. Land change between six categories was simulated using the agent-based model Samba. The process of modeling validation includes labeling pixels as either a hit, miss, false alarm, correct rejection, or a wrong hit. This graph displays the percentage of the total landscape that each of the three components of agreement and disagreement account for. These results can be represented in a three-dimensional matrix space as shown here. The three axes represent the three maps of comparison, and the units are the four land cover categories, which are depicted as A, B, C, and D. This diagram shows correct rejections, which are pixels of reference persistence that the simulation predicted as persistent. Hits are pixels of reference change that the simulation predicted as change to the correct category. Misses are pixels of reference change that the simulation predicted as persistence. This diagram shows false alarms, which are pixels of reference persistence that the simulation predicted as change. This last diagram shows wrong hits, which are pixels of reference change that the simulation predicted as change, but to the wrong category. This demonstrates how coarsening data can reduce errors of spatial allocation. The top box shows four pixels at fine resolution. Two are correct rejections, one is a miss, and one is a false alarm. The bottom box shows the pixels at a coarser resolution, so that the one coarse squared includes the four smaller pixels. When the data is coarsened, the errors that could occur from allocation disagreement between misses and false alarms are eliminated. The code produces this figure, which displays the components of agreement and disagreement for the total study area. In this particular case, as the resolution gets coarser, left to right, correct rejections increase, misses and false alarms cancel each other out with misses becoming correct rejections and false alarms becoming hits. Having this budget graph which displays these at multiple resolutions allows for the user to have a better understanding of how far in space the allocation errors are from each other. At, at a coarser resolution, the pixels are larger and cover more area. Therefore, the allocation errors are farther away from one another. While at a fine resolution, the allocation errors will be closer to each other because the pixels are smaller. Now we will go into detail about how to use the R code and attain these results. In order to start using the R code, we must first open the 3 map comparisonr file in R by clicking File, then Open Script, and then select the R file. While looking at and using the code, it is important to keep in mind that comments are annotated by two hash marks, which indicate that the line of code is not executed by the program. Next, we will download the raster and LULCC packages. This is done by clicking on Packages, then Install Package. Next, you will need to select the server location. Please select the server labeled USA CA1. You will then select the package titled Raster. Repeat these last few steps in order to install the LUCC package as well. These packages must then be downloaded into the program by clicking Packages, then Load Packages, and then select the Raster and LUCC packages. If your program is already set up with a server, this R code provides an alternative to installing and loading the raster and LUCC packages. All you have to do is simply uncomment by deleting the hash marks and run these lines of code highlighted in red. This next part is an example of the 3-map comparison. This is effectively where you enter the path to your data. These lines of code create the raster grids equivalent to those displayed in Figure 3 of Pontius et al. 2011. The next step in the process is to compare the three maps of reference time 1, reference time 2, and simulated time 2. This is done automatically through the execution of the line of code in this highlighted area. The factor function defines the number of aggregation factors. Here, a value of two factors indicates two three-dimensional table outputs, one at a fine resolution and the other at a coarse resolution. This is the main line of code to change if you want to use your own data. The next two lines of code construct the three-dimensional contingency tables, which display the results of the three-map comparison. Let's look at these results a little closer. 
On the right, we see the three-dimensional contingency table at a fine resolution, which was produced by the R code. And on the left, we see an equivalent matrix as depicted in Table 2, which is taken from the Pontius et al. 2011 paper. Within Table 2, we see cells here that have a value of 0.25. This means that the pixel has complete membership to one of the four categories. It is important to note that the absence of values in several cells in table two on the left is for aesthetic purposes and are actually values of zero as seen in the three-dimensional continuity table depicted on the right. Additionally, categories C and D for reference time one are not shown in table two because they are all values of zero. The output matrix depicted here is equivalent to table three in Pontius et al. 2011 a three-dimensional contingency table for the same study area, but this time at a coarse resolution. It can be seen that coarsening the data has resulted in pixels with membership to more than one category. For example, pixels that were A in reference time 1 and C in reference time 2 have a partial membership in simulation time 2 to both land cover categories C and D. The table entries are proportions of the study area that sum to 1, and its marginal totals sum to the proportions of the categories in the maps. We will now look at the code under exercise two. These three lines of code in this red outline section are where the path to the data is entered. These three paths should lead to the three maps that are incorporated in the comparison. Remember that our code needs forward slashes or double backslashes rather than single backslashes in order to run. The second portion of code sets the category with the value of zero within each of the three maps to not available to ensure that it isn't incorporated as a land cover class in the process. This next line of code executes the three map comparison. It may take several minutes for this line of code to finish. This is the main line of code to change if you want to use your own data. If you are using your own data, make sure to adjust the categories, factors, and labels within this line to match your data. After this line is finished executing, there will be warning and error messages which should be ignored. Within this section of the R code, three different agreement budget graphs for multiple resolutions are created by the four lines of code. The plot function plots a graph based on raster objects. These lines can be edited to create results for any specific transition from one category to another that exists within the three map comparison. Each additional plot will overwrite the previous one that was created, so these lines of code should be run out one at a time and saved individually. This is an output budget graph showing components of agreement and disagreement for the total study area. As the resolution gets coarser, left to right, allocation errors shrink. These lines produce figure of merit graphs that go along with the agreement-disagreement and multiple resolution graphs equivalent to figure 12 and 13 from Pontius et al. 2011, respectively. The figure of merit becomes closer to one at the coarsest resolution. We recommend that land change modelers use this open source R code as a standardized measure of agreement and disagreement at, across multiple resolutions. To learn about the philosophy behind using the three-dimensional table for map comparison, please refer to the Pontius et al. 2011 paper which can be accessed through ResearchGate or Pontius's personal website. This R code was created by Simon Mould, so we would like to give a special thanks to him for providing this code for everyone to use. To learn more about this R code, we recommend reading Simon Mould's paper, which is cited here. Thank you.